everybody. Welcome to New Breed Global Truth. I'm your host, brother New Breed, aka Brother Emmanuel. Coming through with another live stream. If you're new to the channel, on this side, we really evaluate societal ills in order to help you avoid some of the pitfalls of the system. I consider this place a safe haven for God's elected people. And what we do over here is we really point out some of the things that we got to deal with on a daily basis in order to overcome those situations and scenarios, right? As you enter the chat, make sure you thumb the video up. I tried to start start a live a few minutes ago, had experienced some technical difficulties, but I'm right back at you, right? You know, I wanted to talk about why a lot of y'all chosen ones irritate those around you. You disturb their existence. And they just can't live and let live. No, 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 no. Doesn't work like that. They can't just move on with their lives and carry on as usual. No, nah, it doesn't work like that. A lot of individuals, they are inhabited by a lot of demonic spirits. And a lot of these people cleave to those who have been chosen, called out of this world, those who take the narrow path, those who decide to do something different with them, their lives and take the road less traveled. You have a lot of individuals that just can't live and let go. They, they got to hold on. They got to grasp onto your very essence. Um, a lot of the times these people become very jealous, envious. Uh, they cast stones. They make up lies. They spread rumors. They do all of these things. And I got to explain why this happens because it's a phenomenon to some. Some people believe it's a straight up phenomenon. Why? You know, all of a sudden, I'm irritating people's spirits and they're, they're really coming at me full fledged with no type of recourse. And what you got to understand is that, first and foremost, some people in your life, no matter what, no matter what, you will not get along with and you cannot connect with because. Their demons are irritated by your spirit. So first and foremost, you got to cut off all contact with individuals that's just not on your level psychologically. And most of all, they're not on your level spiritually. You cannot spend your time around those individuals. It is very detrimental to an empath, to a chosen one, to one who has been awakened. And listen, I'm going to say this. I don't care who it is. It could be your mother, sister, brother, day one. It don't matter who it is, brothers and sisters. Your energy and their energy just does not match. Whatever spirit the Most High God blessed you with, it triggers the demons in them. And they're not, I would say they're not intelligent enough or they don't have the foresight to remove themselves from you because they're cleaving on to you. They're energy vampires. They're not gonna just, they're not just gonna take themselves out of your life. You chosen ones gotta understand this. You gotta be the one to remove yourself, extract yourself from certain situations. You gotta be the bigger person, so to speak. And it may be difficult because it may be people that you really hold near and dear to your heart. It, it, it doesn't matter though. At the end of the day, those people just are not on your level. And that's what you got to understand. It's a harsh reality, but it is what it is, right? Now, why are you irritating their spirits? Why is it that they just can't live and let live? Think about this, right? You could be anything in the world you want to be. I mean, you can be a new age witch. You can celebrate all kind of pagan holidays. Um, you can be whatever religious belief islam uh doesn't matter five percenter uh doesn't matter what what it what it is you could be whatever you want to be and most for the most part if you pay attention most people they're very accepted 
of one's religion. They they really don't care. As long as people live and let live, you can believe whatever you want. Matter of fact, people can be straight up Satanists out here. And as long as you're not bothering nobody and you out here in your home doing pentagrams in the middle of your in the middle of your home, lighting candles, praising Lucifer, nobody seems to really care, right? Long as you live and let live. But there is a belief in this world that seems to strum up a lot of controversy. There is a belief system in this world, the true biblical, the true biblical belief. I mean, in spirit and in truth. Now that seems to ruffle feathers. And let me put this out here. All you chosen ones, elected, ones who answered the call, right? I need you to understand this. You were born to shake things up. You were born for this time and place to shake things up. You are supposed to knock off everything that the world is used to. You, you were born for this, and I need y'all to know that. The Most High God chose certain people for a certain amount of time because he knew the spirit we would have. He didn't, he didn't choose us to be born in slavery time. He didn't choose us to be born in medieval times. He didn't choose us to be born in the dark ages. No, he chose to make a he chose to bring us here in the age of information the age of technology the age of enlightenment and it's a reason for that because you were born to ruffle feathers so first and foremost and i know i said first and foremost a few times but i gotta build this one up because it's it's imperative right you disturb their existence wrap your mind around it accept it that's what you were born for you were born for that so some of y'all be wondering like, yo, why my whole entire life have I gotten mean mugs, cold stares? Why is it that people always kind of frowned upon me? Um, a lot of y'all ladies out there always had it hard because you have jealous siblings. Some of y'all have your own mo mother don't want you to rise. Some of you ladies out there, your own mother don't want to see you find a husband, live happily ever after and do what it is you need to do. Some of you brothers out there, um, some of your day ones, they looking at you out the side of your eye, out the side of their eyes, and you know you don't have your peripheral vision turned on. You're not understanding what's really happening. You dapping some of these cats up, and that dap, it don't have the same energy behind it. See, when you dap somebody up, it's supposed to have a certain energy behind it. That energy is going away. And what a lot of you brothers and sisters got to realize, let me make this clear: people's spirit change. Their spirits change. Just because when they was your day one, just because back in the day they was cool, y'all was kicking it, y'all was y'all was thick as thieves out here. Just because that's how it was, that don't mean how it's, that's what it's going to be, and that don't mean that's what it is right now. Listen, people change. People's spirits change. I'm not the same person I was five years ago. You're not the same person you was five years ago. Literally. You went your life in your life. You went through a series of events that either catapulted you further in this spiritual journey or it gave you setbacks. There's a lot of people in your life. You try to look at them the same way, but their spirit is no longer the same. And I need everybody to pound the like button on the video. King Leon, thank you for the $10 contribution says I'm um, in my living room praying, getting this spiritual food. God is good. Keep bringing the heat, Bree. Thank you, brother. I appreciate the support, man. Thanks. And, you know, that's what's going on right now. A lot of what we are witnessing, a lot of what we are experiencing in this walk, in this journey, in this world, is because we, and I'm talking about the, the downfalls, right? A lot of the stress that we cause ourselves, a lot of the things that we experience that we shouldn't experience, is mostly coming because it's mostly coming from other people it's mostly coming from individuals because we haven't put our foot down and decided to put the most high first when you put the most high first a lot of people are going to walk in and out of your life um, a lot of people are going to disappear or dissipate a lot of people going to hate a lot of people going to become jealous and envious of you um, it's because your spirit has changed you are going through a metamorphosis I liken to it, I like to liken this to when Neo first woke up out the Matrix, right? And 
he came out of that incubator. He came out of that pod and he looked around. He looked around and what he can see is that there's still so many people that sleep. There's still so many people who are being brainwashed by this society. And the brainwashing stems very deep. I'm talking about, listen, brothers and sisters, the ultimate goal for the media is to outlaw true Bible believers, to outlaw the chosen ones, and pretty much make it us versus them or them versus us. That's the society that you live in. in. They want to roll out digital currency, um, the mark of the beast. They want to institute, but they, in order to do so, you have to create a silver lining. And anybody who speaks against their programming, anybody who speaks against their brainwashing, anybody who speaks against their left wing liberal agendas that they got going on, listen, people don't want to hear it. They're looking at you like the enemy because you're breaking the program. You're breaking the matrix, your very existence. Just the fact that you woke now, you can see you out of the matrix. You can see it. Now, every time you come around, it reminds them something they spirit is clicking like, yo, I got to wake up. I am in a dream. I am in a nightmare. I am in a simulation, but I don't want to wake up from it because it's, it's, it's frightening. Y'all got to put yourselves back in a time where you didn't know the truth. It was very frightening to even digest the fact that the world that we living in has so many secret agendas and there's so much going on. It, it was frightening to wake up to that because to much knowledge, much grief. So what happens is when you brothers and sisters come around, you're grieving their spirits. Their spirits are literally being grieved because you exuberate this wisdom, the Holy Spirit, the most high puts something in you. There's a light that you're shining is coming through you. Even if you don't notice it, it's there. Everybody else around you, they see this light and it hurts their eyes. It's grieving their spirits. They know that they're living sinful. They know that they're living wrong. They know that there's a huge lie being told on a grand scale. And they're they're frightened to wake up from it. But your presence is shaking them from the core. That's the main reason. And, and it's crazy because what this can end up doing, if that person is not gradually changing and waking up, what it can end up doing is creating a very unhealthy obsession with you. You got to be aware because listen, in this time, a lot of people are becoming murderous. Murderers. I'm talking about overnight killers. And if you look at what goes on, it is always the person closest to somebody who's the culprit. It's a spouse, the one that takes you out. It's a, a friend. It's the mother. Y'all see what they did to Shanquella. Friends let her out, took her out of her safety zone. Lined that young lady up. Why is it like this, one would ask. I'm going to tell you why. Because a lot of people have become weakened. When Lucifer fell, right, it says he did us weaken the nations. Now, when we talk about this weakness that Lucifer caused, this weakness also made people emotionally codependent on other people. Instead of being emotionally invested in the most high, the creator, emotionally and spiritually and psychologically invested in the one who made you, people are invested in other people. And see, this is where a problem comes in because people begin to venerate others to the point of idolatry, to the point it, to the point where they feel like, and I know this is hard for you to wrap your mind around. You got individuals out here who feel like they, they idolize envy, hate, and they have so much invested in a person that if they take that person out of the game, they take their light, they somehow become them. That's how evil it is. That's the that's how deep the weakness goes. Where they're, they're grabbing at the chosen. They're trying to hold on and latch on to the point of sacrifice, to the point of ritual, 
that's what a world is coming to. It's coming. It's becoming a dark place out here. And this is why I, I give these messages for the chosen so we can avoid being around these murderous, conniving devils in our lives because it's always the ones close to you. It's becoming like medieval times. We're living in a time of sacrifice where people, your own family align you up. They will poison you. They will... Listen, they will spread lies, all manners of evil on you to, in order to... Listen, what did the scripture say? The scripture says, those of thy own household, friends and family, colleagues, associates, and I'm paraphrasing. It says it will cause you to be brought to death. They will cause you to be brought to death. So when I speak on these things, it is very serious. It's a fervent warning. The Bible tell you they will cause you to death. This ain't thus say of new breed. This ain't my own doctrine. This ain't none of that. The Bible says those close to you will cause you to death. That's how bad you irritate their spirit. That's how bad you disturb their goings. They feel like you have to be taken out. You have to be taken out. Even when you look at the takeoff situation. Everybody around this young man said that he was a quiet, calm soul. He listened more than he talked. He was around people. We got to learn from these situations. He was a cool dude. He was all about providing for the family. He was all about doing what is righteous. Although his music wasn't righteous, his actions were righteous as far as how he took care of his family. All right? He was a provider for those around him. He gave Migos direction, right? But guess what? We all know. We all know what happened to him. Everybody, the whole entire world knows. And that was a warning to the entire world that those close to you will do you in and do you dirty at a private party. It could be a private event. A pri Listen, that's why I'm telling you around Christmas time, around these pagan holidays. Listen, at this point in time, in the age of information, where people should know that these holidays are ritualistic they're pagan they're satanic there's deities being venerated on a grand scale I, i'm at the point and i'm gonna tell you this right now i feel like the most high he's taking a lot of grace away from people because the information's out there is spreading like wildfire if your family have caught wind of anything if y'all sharing with y'all family these videos, y'all talking about certain things, you are the light bearer in your family, you speaking out, and they still want to sit back and celebrate these holidays, I'm going to tell you right now, they are on demon time. There's no other way to explain it. They are on demon time. I don't care if it's auntie, grandma, cousin, sister, brother. Listen, the most high wink on our ignorance. But if you have been a light bearer, you put it out there. You said, listen, this is pagan. This is satanic. Look, I can go to the scriptures. Jeremiah 10 tell us not to do the Christmas holiday. Listen, and you just put it out there. You already said something so the blood is not on your hands. Because if we don't make these things uh, apparent and we bring them out there, the blood is on our hands. Right? But if you put it out there and they still want to celebrate these holidays, they on demon time. They might line you up one day. I'm going I'm to go that far. Because you got to be careful with a lot of individuals. There's a lot of people around you who are in the Freemasonic order. And I'm not saying that everybody who has joined the Freemasons know exactly what they're doing. But a great deal of people who have accelerated and propelled to 33rd degrees. People who have been in the lodges, who know certain secrets who have read the books, I'm gonna tell you right now, you may be that sister in your family that's like Rosemary's baby. You might not even know they've been gaslighting you, watching you, waiting on your unborn child so they can try to, you know, take your unborn child from you. Like the, the, the rabbit hole goes deep. The rabbit hole goes deep. So it's, it's, it's almost like as chosen ones, right? And let me put this out here. It's almost like we take the light that the Most High give us for granted. And we believe that 
no matter what we're protected on the contrary that's a mistake that's a flawed thought process to think that no matter what but listen i'm one of god's chosen i'm in this word the most high know my heart we you know we all say these things to ourselves right but if you are allowing individuals in your life that are not supposed to be there they're not on the same wavelength they're not on the same frequency they will cause a catastrophic event to take place in your life something that could have been avoided something that just seriously could have been avoided because you were not taking heed you were not listening you thought you can change the system you thought you can change everybody around you it don't work like that you're disturbing their spirit on a level that you don't even comprehend there's people right now that's watching you brothers and sisters on social media they not saying a damn thing they watching you every day when you posting showing your your children and you getting new things and you elevating you and you and your husband or you and your wife y'all doing your thing y'all living life the fruit of your bodies are blessed there's somebody in the cut that is right there i'm telling you they're right there they're watching you day in and day out everything you post they right there they don't say a damn thing and you know why because every single day they're praying on your downfall every day every day they looking at you and they like yo this person still got that vehicle they still got that same house they living in they still got that same you know they their children are growing up man they you know they aging gracefully and they looking at you and you know what they doing they are praying to, they praying to the devil they praying to Allah, they, pr they praying to white Jesus, they praying to, to, to all manners of evil that you just die. And they watch you every day. And they like, yo, this person is still here. And they are so frustrated at your existence. You not, you not, I mean, you not talking to them, you minding your business, you drinking your water, you reading your scriptures, you doing what it is you do. You got tunnel vision on the most high and they are sitting there and they are watching you day in and day out. Like, yo, I don't want this person to continue to succeed. I thought the last trial that they went through was the one, you know how many people looking at you? Like I thought the last trial they went through the last episode, the last pitfall, the last bit of persecution they hit, they were sitting there like, yo, I thought that was the one that was gonna take them out. And, and listen, they are grieving that it didn't. They're literally grieving like, yo, that person made that mistake and it didn't destroy them? Like who the hell they think they are? And you know what they do? Eventually, when they see that the Most High God is batting for you and fighting for you yeah they be big mad they be big mad once they see that you still afloat and you doing what it is you do guess what they do wait a couple weeks wait a couple days wait a couple months you won't get a phone call from them you won't get a phone call from them it ain't because they love you it ain't because they checking up on you it ain't because none of that it's because they they feel they now need they they now have found the need to play you close they have now found the need to play you closely now because it's like, hold on, maybe because I'm too far, maybe because there's a distance between us. So now they've already premeditating how to stop you. They have premeditated, even if they haven't grasped, that's what they're doing. They have premeditated ways to throw a chink in the armor, to slow you down, to stop you. This, this is real. We battle not against flesh and blood. We battle against principalities and wickedness. Now them demons have tormented them so much. It's like, all right, you need to move in. Send them the invite. Because I, because this is what they think. By themselves, I thought if I cut them off, if I shun them, if I isolate them, if I lie on them, if I fall back from them and I just watch them from a distance, I thought they were going to fall. That's how they think. That's how they think of y'all. I thought if I watched them, plot on them, pray against them, I thought they were going to fall if I left them alone. But they didn't fall. Matter of fact, they made it even further. 
Matter of fact, God is showing his light on them even more. So let me move in. Let me move in now. And this is how these devils and snakes be in your life. And then when they move in, what do they do? How you doing? Start. What's the first thing they're going to do? Fish for information. Y'all got to stop telling everybody your information because you doing good. Don't think just because somebody asks how you doing, they want to hear that you doing good. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just because somebody asks you how you doing, that don't mean they want to hear that you doing good. No, 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 no. We in the, listen, man, everybody on demon time now. They don't want to hear that. They want information because the witches and the wizards, the perpetrators and gang stalkers, they will use information against you. Loose lip sync ships, whatever piece of information they can get. Oh, better believe you're going to see it come back around full surface. Whatever you put out there to them, whatever you projected because you trusted them because you have a forgiving heart because you have um, you have empathy, you have compassion. You put that information out there and then what happens? All of a sudden it come back to bite you in your ass later because you didn't gave information to a witch. You didn't gave information to a wizard. You didn't gave information to somebody who was set up in your life to destroy you. And you didn't you done went backwards. You didn't move forward. And it, these things I'm telling you is going to be imperative in the days to come. It's going to be very imperative. Real talk. Somebody says, yes, God is saying, keep your mouth shut. Their time is now and your time. And so is your time to prosper. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you like this. A lot of the times the most high God is working out a situation. He is about to vindicate you against your enemies but you're getting in the way of it you're you're stepping in the way of him doing what he needs to do why because you're trying to play chess with people you you taking matters into your own hands you bringing people around you you're trying to argue debate you allowing people to trigger you and gaslight you you allowing people to trigger something in you and what's happening is you're going back and forth you fighting battles that you shouldn't even be fighting and since you're doing that his judgment on that person never comes through matter of fact it ended up going to you you end up getting judged because you were disobedient you were the one who's supposed to have the enlightenment you were the supposed to you're the one who's supposed to have the discernment so you're supposed to know when to fall back from a situation and allow the most high god to judge that person without you going back and forth without you arguing without you um trying to change them you say you know what i'm gonna let go of this situation i'm gonna remain silent i'm gonna let the most high god deal with this i'm gonna have temperance and there's gonna be a lot of people you're gonna look up and say oh that must have been an enemy because I had temperance, patience, obedience to my creator, knowing when to dissociate myself with certain individuals, even if they trying to uh, bring the worst out of me. I knew when to fall back. And now look, that wasn't a person having a bad day. No, that was an actual enemy. And how do I know this? Look what the most high God doing to him. How many people have you looked at chosen ones and you seen in the past that was giving you all hell, giving you hellfire and brimstone? You may have been living with this person. It may be an intimate relationship you was in. It may have been you was dealing with somebody who was giving you all hell. And then you look back and you like, yo, God, the most high God did a number on that person. I mean, he did a number on them. When I finally went away and did what I needed to do and serve the creator, man, the most high God will, he will, he will deal with that individual. And you're not going to rejoice at the fact that that person is hurting or down you're going to rejoice at the fact that the most high god had righteous judgment that's what you're going to rejoice at the fact that yo the most high god is a righteous god his judgment is just his judgment is pure um if i'm obedient 
my enemies don't stand a chance against me. But if, I, if I'm disobedient and I continue to play these games with people, knowing that when I come around, you don't like me um, for whatever the reason is. When I go to, to the workplace, I see you in my face, you smiling in my face. Um, I know you don't like me. I know that you talking behind my back. I know that you don't have my best interests at heart. But see, as people, we like to play these games. We like to compete with our enemies. We like to be in the midst of people that we know deep down in our spirits don't belong there. Instead of doing that, play them cold. Play them cold turkey. Once people, let me tell you something. Once these devils and these little snakes out here realize that how strong you are in the spirit, oh, oh man, let me tell you something. Your authority your authority becomes uh, very, very powerful. What did the Bible say for the righteous? Remember what them scriptures say. Even your enemies will have peace with you. Ooh, y'all know what scripture that is. Put it in the chat if y'all know what scripture that is. When you walk in in that truth, even your enemies will have peace with you. Because they know they can't beat you. Imagine that somebody so demonically possessed, they riddled with spirits. They got so much going on with them and they want to destroy you. I'm talking about it could be the worst of the worst type of person, bro. But because you on your purpose and the most high y'all got so much protection around you. He got these warrior angels around you standing bold. Proverbs 16 and 7 is what it is. Even your enemies would be like, oh, I don't want no smoke with that person. I'm going to let that person be. I'm going to leave them alone. There's something in the spiritual realm that they got going on that if I if I try to rise my tongue in condemnation against them, if I, if I say something against them, oh, that's just the wrong person to mess with. That's the wrong person to deal with. Once your enemies realize that, oh, you know you're in the right path. When they they like uh uh I, that's a person right there I I don't don't speak on that person it could be the most treacherous the most they, they thanks Rollo Proverbs sixteen and seven says when a man's ways please the Lord he making even his enemies to be at peace with him whoo that's powerful when a man's ways please the Lord even his enemies gotta be at peace with him they can't come against you it ain't nothing they can do. Because you are far beyond their little their little spirits, their little dark forces, their little demons. You are on a you are on an astronomical level. They that's like they realize that you are lying and you are not concerned with the opinions of sheep. They realize that that's like throwing pebbles at a giant. Even speaking negative on your name is throwing pebbles at a real live giant. That's what we need to be in this walk, ladies and gentlemen. Pivotal giants. Chosen ones got to be pivotal giants where our spirits are strong to the point. Can't nobody come against us. You can talk all you want. I, I Listen, when somebody got something negative to say about me, listen, there's guys that made videos against me. If y'all pay attention, there's an individual in particular. I am not going to say this individual name. He made videos. He said, new breed day is coming. Y'all remember what he said? One of these guys said he made a video. He said, New Breed's day is coming. God is about to judge New Breed. And what happened? He ain't on YouTube no more. The most I got removed him. You know why? Because my ways please the Lord. I rebuttaled one time, kept making videos, kept trolling me, kept scoffing me. I ain't said nothing else. I done seen people fall off. I done seen people. I've been here for years now. So obviously my ways must be somewhat pleasing to the most high. And I'm saying that because I have to be an example. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, listen. When you are really walking in this walk, when you in it, I'm telling you, there's certain rules. And, and there's times where we, we fall short of the glory. We all do. We all fall short. We all entertain certain things we shouldn't entertain. And we, you know, we get a slap on the wrist for it because we don't bother nobody. Your presence irritates them. Your existence. They can't just let you live your life. They can't. Imagine this, right? You grow up in a community 
And this is for the ladies out here. And I really wonder, I wanna give this message to the ladies for a second. We'll get back to you fellas, but I got a message for y'all because I don't think y'all realize how conniving these women is out here. Yeah, it's a lot of these guys, when we talk about the takeoff situation, but it ain't. Listen, the Bible says there's very little evil compared to the evil of a woman. You know, Eve was the one that was seduced. Let's make this very clear. She is the weaker vessel. It is very, listen, what they did to Shanquella, right? I, I want y'all ladies to wrap your mind around this. You could be that, that sister that do exactly what it is you're supposed to be doing in life. You can have your own business going. I mean, you can be, you could be a humble sister. Um, you could be one of those those sisters that really got her head on a swivel. Um, you don't got your coochie all over the streets. You keep your coochie to yourself. You you may have that one guy you dealing with or whatever the case may be, but you're not spreading it thin. You're not out here just just giving it to everybody. So the ones around you, right? The, the, the ladies around you who are doing that, they're unhappy. They're unhappy because they don't have foresight. They don't have vision. They they um, they for the streets. And any woman that's for the streets, she's dangerous because she got a lot of different spirits she's dealing with. If y'all ladies is hanging with 304s, you, you, you're in a very dangerous situation because a woman who's a 304 that's out here getting it popping, she got all the spirits of all these men in her. So she's 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 crazy, bro. She's she's absolutely insane. Because when that DNA crosses, it it really it really bothers the mind of a woman. And a lot of ladies are living like this. They live in this sexually liberated, free-forming culture. They feel like they're empowered out here spreading it thin. It's dangerous for y'all to be in a company of ladies like this, ladies. Because although you may have your mind together and you may have foresight and you may have your business, you have one thing that you are lacking. You have one thing that you are lacking. Actually, two things. There's two things. Number one, a lot of y'all empath, a lot of y'all righteous sisters out here, a lot of y'all lack direction. Number one, because y'all don't, because you feel like you equal to a man, some of y'all. Number one is direction. You need direction from a brother. I don't care if it's, it could be your brother, your uncle, a father, but you need some type of direction. Even if it's just somebody you watching on YouTube, but that person is, is a man and he's leading direction. That's, that's one thing. And the second thing is for you righteous women who are trying to get on the right path, you're naive. You're very naive. You think that because you are a certain way, that your girlfriends are a certain way. Listen, a lot of your homegirls were afforded the same opportunities that you were afforded. They have this the same opportunities. That, listen, they have the same 24 hours in a day that a lot of y'all ladies got to do what you need to do, to do what they need to do. And they're not doing it. They looking at you. And y'all don't understand the, the conniving, jealous nature of these 304 wombat trifling women out here they do not want to see you succeed and i can see and i'm really speaking this to the ladies because there's there's a lot more women than men on the earth there's a lot more women than men on earth right now as we speak a lot of us brothers we 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 are damn endangered species at this point we're an endangered species so what that does is it sets up a very competitive it sets up a very competitive nature among women because of the lack of righteous, responsible, um, good brothers. And so you have a, a whole, instead of it being a sisterhood, there's just a, com a very competitive nature on a lot of these women. And you just never know what one of these backstabbing, conniving thought pockets will do to you. So ladies, I understand that you want sisterhood, you want friendship, but you need to pay attention. The Bible says judge one by their fruits. What are they doing in their life? Are they starting their own business? Are they tending to a household? Do they have children to keep them grounded? Do they have children at home to keep them level-headed? How do they provide for their children? Is your homegirl leaving? Is she leaving the babies with the mama all the damn time? Every time you turn around, 
is your homegirl dropping the kids off with somebody else all the damn time though all the time though of course every mother needs a break but i'm talking about she stay she don't never go pick them kids up you you don't look at these little things and be like yo this could be a murderous conniving beast because she don't even care about her own damn kids You got to piece everything together. You got to judge every little thing that they got going on in their life. With women, with women, y'all ladies got to be careful, man. Because those, listen, we're going to see an uptick and an increase on this. Because women, they, boy, they barbaric with it. The way, the way they would do you, I mean, I pull all your hair out your scalp beat you to no end stomp you down i mean it's the hate and, and the venom they have for righteous women who just trying to live right oh it's it's just it's it's one of those things where you you don't understand what you're doing their spirits are darkened you really got to be in the right being around right company somebody said i don't have any kids crazy responsible though i do not have home girls i know of girls and guys hey sis hey bro i'm going home peace okay i feel you a lot of women these days don't hang out with a lot of other women they may have one or two but you got to be aware when you got a bunch of friends in general in 2023 you are lucky to be in a room full of people it could be 30 people in that room. You are, listen, you would be lucky to have two people in a room full of 30 people who actually have the most high in their life, who actually have some similitude of morality, who actually are on something. You, and at this current moment, you would be very blessed to be in a room full of 30 people where a few of these people are right. I don't trust many people. I'm I'm solo. I'm dolo. Uh, I'm not a weirdo. I'm not socially awkward. Um, I engage with people. But when I tell you that in this day and age, I understand my spiritual authority and so should you. And you do not want to cast your pearls before swine and you do not want to be around a bunch of people, bro. It is draining to your energy. It, it depletes your thought process. It takes you further away from the most high. A lot of us got to recover when we get around certain individuals. That's just not where it's at, bro. Somebody said, you mean if you find one apart from yourself, that is morally right. Exactly. Yeah, you got to keep your circle small. You got to. And you got to be aware of people who watch you, but they don't support you. They don't say nothing. Those are the ones right there, I'm telling you. The so-called onlookers and observers that never got nothing to say. They, they, they just, somebody said, keep pushing more isolation. Listen, I'm going to tell you like this. I'm not pushing isolation. What I'm pushing is discernment. Let me, let me stop for a second. That person that says you keep pushing isolation. That's not what I'm pushing. I'm not isolated 24 hours of the day. I don't push that. So don't even push that narrative. What I'm pushing is discernment. Let's not get religious and crazy now. Let's, let's, let's ease up a little bit. There's a big difference. I don't want you side-eyeing every single human being that you come in contact with. But what I want you to do is actually test the spirits of those around you. And when you watch one of these videos, it should automatically test, make you test spirits. It should automatically be like, all right, so what is this person's intention? You should listen, I make the type of contact that'll make you go through your call log. You will scroll through your call log, you will look at the numbers they're in, and be like, okay, what is this person's intentions? That person's intentions, this person's intentions. What role are they trying to play in my life actually? How are they beneficial to my journey? How are they helping my life? Is this person a friend or a foe? Since I've came in contact with this individual, what has gotten better in my life? Have I rose to the occasion? Have this person been a positive addition? 
Is this individual somebody I consider a friend? Uh, are they morally acceptable? How do they take care of it? This is the type of stuff you gotta ask yourself because I don't know what it is about people and their codependencies, but chosen ones, you really, you, you really got to understand. You really got to understand there ain't no bunk beds in the grave. You hear what I said? There ain't no damn bunk beds in the grave. You came in this joint butt naked by yourself unless you had a twin brother or a twin sister. And even if you had a twin brother or a twin sister, when they put you in a casket, they ain't gonna put you in no bunk beds. You're gonna be in your separate casket by yourself. Matter of fact, when you face the creator, you're gonna be by yourself on your lonely. I'm just saying. When you look at it like that, when you look at it like that, at any given point in your life, you will be prepared for somebody to walk out of your life at any given time. Because you realize, listen, I have found peace knowing that God is looking at me as an individual. I have found peace knowing that. Now, it will be nice to have, you know, a companion in your life. It'll be nice to have people in your life who are friends it'd be nice to have a great support system in your life it would be very that would be great but if people don't add up to that and the most high have made a way where i can make it on my lonely i'm going uh, hey listen it is what it is i'm not gonna force the issue <laughs> you understand <clears throat> Rhonda says i stay well for a minute i just wasn't right you missing me though I don't know what you're saying. That's you saying a lot at once. Somebody says, by by yourself before God on that day, you gotta go God's way concerning everything nowadays, more than ever. Real talk. That is real talk. And everybody pound the like button, y'all. Pound the like button. The likes should have been over a thousand. We got over fifteen hundred people in the building. Somebody said, Ooh, I think. The Lord, I'm so good at this now, being alone. Hey, it is what it is. Look like I hold on, wiped the camera off a little bit. Hold on, look like we got a little a little glare on the camera. That's not good. Hold on real quick, y'all. It's look it's looking a little it was looking a little ashy up in here. Somebody said it would it would be nice, but if they ain't right, they don't need to be in your space. Real talk. Let me tell you this, right? You better off alone than sleeping next to your murderer. You better off by yourself than sleeping next to your daggone killer. Seriously. In this day and age, bro, most murders are conducted by who? The closest one to you. You are better all by yourself. I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. Somebody said, uh, for real, the community session do a lot for us, bro. Right. I'm going to tell you this, right? It's like this. The Matrix, right? I want to bring this back up because when Neo woke up out that pod, and you know the Matrix is, before I even say this, the Matrix is a phenomenal movie when you really get to understand it. And for those who don't know, the Matrix is a, the Matrix movie, the whole series was originally written by a black woman. And what she's really, the story is way deeper than you think. She actually had, she actually wrote the Terminator too. I'm gonna to give y'all this little, this little jewel for a second. She wrote the Terminator and the Terminator movie was a was basically a futuristic addition to the Matrix, and people don't even peep that. It was man versus machine. So she wrote both movies, and they all actually are cohesive when you put it together. So it, it's it's about time travel. The Matrix is actually about time travel, um, and man versus machine, which is coming. Y'all see, they making robo robo cops and all of these things. So that lady was a visionary and Neo was actually Christ. Neo was actually the supposed to be like the Messiah. So 
anyway, I don't know what made me tell you all that because I don't know if some people know this information. But anyway, I just want to put it out there how deep the Matrix movie is, right? But anyway, I love the Matrix and I love Terminator too because I get, now I know who wrote it and I get what it is, right? So here's the thing. When Neo woke up out of that pod, when he became enlightened, all hell broke loose around him. All of the Agent Smiths came forward. Um, they all started to try to fight him. And that's what's happening in our lives, man. Once we unplug from the Matrix and we can see, and you can't unsee what's going on, you started to lose interest in all the things you once loved, like um, the things that you held near and dear to your heart that really wasn't important. You just, you just started changing, bro. It's like, yo, when you wake up, I can almost to a degree, let me be the most highest advocate here, to a degree, I can see why people would think we're peculiar when you wake up. Because like we literally change. Like imagine, all right, so imagine on the outside looking in, you just woke up, you got all this great insight, all this wisdom, you're changing, but you became so withdrawn. I don't think we realize what we went through when we woke up, when we went through that incubator, when that transition happened, it's like, imagine your family looking at you and like, yo, this person is very withdrawn. They don't want to participate in a lot of things. They're quiet. They're reading all day. Um, they have a glow to them, but there's an intimidation factor that comes in because you, you're, not, you're not speaking much. There's a lot of things that's gradually happening to you. And what end up happening is, to a degree, you can kind of see why their feathers got ruffled. But when they continue down that dark path, when they don't begin to embrace you because of the changes, the positive changes in your life, yeah, the book of Sirach, chapter six, verse seven. When they don't begin to embrace the positive changes, then you gotta be weary of them. Because some people that's in those pods, some people that still sleep, some people who haven't woken up, yo, if you try to shake them out they sleep, they will they will bite your head off. They will kill you. It's like, no, no. They see you waking up and you tell them the truth, ooh, they get that little jealous, demonic, evil look on their face or they get a real blank stare or they get a real blank stare. You better be careful. You better be careful around them blank stare people yeah, somebody said, I became like Huey Freeman. You crazy. Yeah, they too far gone. Yep. Some people are just too damn far gone. They down the rabbit. Listen, they didn't dive down that rabbit hole and they not coming up out of it. Two thirds of our people are irreparable. Irreparable. I seen some of these nasty ass two thirds out here eating rats. They done. They done. I've seen these nasty two-thirds. I've seen this stripper with her child up in the strip club with her. A little two, three-year-old baby girl with her. She got, they gone. It's over. I'm talking about these dudes was on camera eating dead rats. The rat wasn't even cooked. Eating dead rats for likes and views. That's what the two-thirds of this over for them. They don't give a damn what they eat. Listen, they are sold under sin. They are given to a reprobate mind. They are down with, they down with the devil. I'm talking about all the way. I'm talking about the, the, some of the two thirds taking their children to these transgender, these damn tra these transgender shows or whatever, whatever you call them things, with them cross cross dressing things, where they wearing these little nasty clothes in front of all these kids. Listen, there's some of the two thirds. They embrace this. They got, they done. They done. They far gone now. It's over. Some of these two thirds, man, you listen, they're gonna call you gonna tell them the truth. Hey, listen, you shouldn't be eating that, this, that, and the third, and they will destroy you. They will kill you. For the truth, the truth must be held sacred. Yep, somebody said, yeah, the the, the drag, the dragons, the fire breathing dragons doing shows for kids. Yeah, imagine you telling somebody like, listen, man, I, I just read the Bible. 
man, it, it, it woke it, it woke me up to so much, man. My eyes are open, man. And I found this peace. And um, man, the Most High is blessing me, and I'm seeing different things. And he, He's blessing the fruit of my bodies and certain ailments I'm getting over. And oh man, I just want to I want to show you this. And they just look at you like Satan. Their eyes change. I mean, they go through a whole metamorphosis. They shape shift right before you. There's people, I've seen this happen before. And they look at you and they, and it's almost like they have this, this, this look where they trying to scourge through you. You crazy as hell if you keep talking to them people. That's like you asking to be lined up. It's like you asking for it. Yeah, they go totally dark. They fade to black right on you. See, a lot of y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. People said it. He's like, yeah, I know that look. Yep. Yeah, when they give you that look, oh, there's a demon inside. Yep, yep, Sean the Navigator know what I'm talking about. When they give you that look, boy, that look. Oh, man, I seen that look from somebody very close to me before, bro. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. Joseph Bennett, thank you for the hundred dollar contribution. Says y'all need to stop just lurking and like bros' videos. If you get nuggets of wisdom and truth from it, show some reciprocation and energy goes a long way, even if it's in different forms. My brother Joseph, thank you, family. I appreciate that. Salute. Thank you for the support, bro. And y'all heard what Joseph said. If he could put together a hundred bucks and support the work, then man, listen to what Joseph just said in the chat. And do your due diligence and do your part, man. That's some real stuff right there. Not only he just supported in two ways. That was a double entendre. He supported the work and he's embracing y'all to support. Man, see, that's love right there. Real talk. See, that motivate me to do videos every day. Stuff like that, when I see that I got some real supporters, that make me want to come and have these talks with y'all daily. Every day. Real talk. Knowing that I got people who really rocking with me, man. That's a good thing. Because although there's a lot of devils in disguise, there's a lot of people who are just naysayers, haters, and, and onlookers. There's also people in your life who are righteous, too. So it's balanced to everything. There's also people in your life that's really rocking with you, ten toes down. Like, And a lot of the times, they don't do stuff just to be seen and validated. They, 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 they pop up when they need to pop up. You know what I'm saying? John Doe, thanks for the 10. Says, thank you, New Breed. You speak the truth. I appreciate it, bro. Real talk. You know how some people, they do things just for the clout, just to be, you know what I mean? You got to be wary of that because y'all chosen ones got to understand you are the clout. Wrap your mind around that. All you brothers and sisters dealing with the long suffering, dealing with the daily rigmarole, dealing with the haters, dealing with the two th thirds and the jealous. You are the clout. They looking for you. Listen, they looking for your spiritual voltage. They looking for your light, man. Don't let them grab it. Don't let them get your light, man. I'm telling you. Somebody said, uh, I keep finding people, keep finding people on my level on the internet. Yeah, that's that's crazy because the internet does a good job of shrinking the world. Uh, and has a good, it does a good job of making us gravitate towards one another. So that's a good thing. And that's why we have communities such as this one. Um, like I said at the beginning, to everybody who joined, um, to, for everybody who's joining, make sure you subscribe because you may be catching this video and you may be watching me for the first time. Listen, let me put this out here. Listen, there's a lot of pitfalls that we got to avoid. Start off with your household. Start off with getting those individuals out of your life who don't belong there. And remember, some people you just got to love from a distance. Some people you just can't deal with on a daily basis. Some people you have to keep them arm's length. And be very weary of people who who are toxic, who like to keep stuff going. Um, beware of those people, too, because there's going to be people among your family, friends and whatever. That is always going to be those um, those individuals who like to just keep drama in the mix, keep things going. Pay attention to that person in your family who likes to instigate situations and likes to keep drama going. And those individuals who who really can't function without 
something happening like you really want to stay away from those type of individuals because if you righteous and you chosen those people right there will be really irritated really irritated by your presence and anybody that's irritated by the presence of a person who's trying to do right and righteous anybody who's irritated by your presence and disturbed they're dangerous they can be possibly your murderer one day and i'm not saying that to be facetious or sensationalize nothing they can be your murderer one day they could be the one that take you out and line you up. So, you know, be careful who you bring in your life, man. Be very, very careful. And uh, if you like this work, share it. Thumb the video up. Feel free to crop certain parts of the video. If you would like to post it on TikTok or whatever else you want to post it, keep the work moving. It's highly appreciated. Uh, I, listen, I thank each and every one of y'all for catching another show. Um, Follow me on Patreon, patreon.com backslash newbreed. Support my content at newbreed.love. Get yourself a love note. Uh, we got more content coming, man. I want everybody to have a blessed day. Y'all stay safe and balanced out here. Charlie, thanks for the 20. Y'all have a good one, man. Shalom and peace.